I'm Mark Byrne and I teach photography at Francis Parker School and Cinematography and AP 2D Art. And I'm Maya Pratt and I've taken photography at Francis Parker for two years and next year I'll be going to the University of Pennsylvania. Okay, so I've been teaching photography for a long time and it was very popular from the get-go, but that was before digital. So um, it, was, it was still very, very popular in the late 90s, mid 90s, and then digital started to come around and the kids would take it their freshman year, their sophomore year, and then they go, what are we going to do next year? Well, more of the same, because they're all mixed together in one big photo class. And then AP, the advanced placement tests came along which I sort of ignored, but then I saw that it was a way to have a deadline and they gave you a lot of freedom. You just had to turn in a portfolio at the end of the year. Pretty much you could teach the class the way you wanted it. And the way the school is, is the kids are pretty competitive and when they saw there was something to aim for, then it was easy to, they had a goal, so it was easier to teach them towards that AP class. And art schools have always said, well, anything that gets, makes you up, um, think critically about your own work and edit it down to a series of images that are related, which that does, helps with that. But at first we aimed for art schools, but then we started going more for, photography touches on everything, like the assignments are, um, um, you have assignments such as suburbia and film noir and like anything in 20th century American culture, and you can reference paintings with it, like give them a pictorialism assignment. So it began to move more into like a social studies class, which was even better because then I got kids that were interested in literature and interested in anthropology and sociology and all sorts of different things. And they could also communicate personally because when you're a teenager, you're kind of um, powerless. You, you're told what to do. Your, your life is hyper-scheduled, at this school anyway, and you have sports, and then you have studying, and then you're back up there early in the morning, and they, they have uniforms. Everything's controlled, but if you take a picture, what's in your mind's eye ends up on that film, especially if it's analog film, because you have an actual analog of something that you saw, a light touched it, so there's that personal connection. And then you put these in a portfolio, and you, you, it sort of empowers you and gives you sort of power power over the world you're around to show people exactly what you saw and the way you see it and to put it in your own mind's eye and uh, so it's something that you control because it's your mind and it also works well developmentally because you can see like ninth grade the, the relation to their parents and their families change over an arc till they're seniors they get farther away the parents become more like autonomous they become more autonomous and their parents become more like nice people that they love and all that but not like the, the power relations start to change and the independence starts. So all these things come into it and the AP, um, their concentration, a lot of times they just lay their work out on the floor and you start picking out the best stuff and you find a pattern in it and that becomes their required concentration in the end. It's such a supportive environment and I love how everybody is open for collaboration and everybody is there, brings different perspectives based on their, um, their family, what they choose to photograph, what they bring into class and it also gives you a window into their character based on the images that they lay out on the ground to see, oh, like, tell me more about that, like, oh, is that a picture of your mother, like, that's an interesting uh, robe she's wearing, like, does that have anything to do with um, your heritage or your culture and it brings different perspectives and it gets to know your peers better through the photography and the collaboration of sharing and bringing in different perspectives on what, how we choose to photograph and how we choose to interpret and what we deem important and therefore want to capture in our images. And for me personally, I'm really interested in philosophy and English and, and also feminism. And those are three things that I'm involved with in, in at Parker. And so I wanted to bring those into my concentration for AP Photo. So I focused on the feminine divine and bringing in different aspects of femininity, different motifs and symbols. And that was mo mostly what I focused on. So um, in my concentration, I went down and photographed boats. Uh, I photographed the Star of India and the masthead or the figurehead of the boat to represent um, just uh, femininity and being driven and just relating to the feminine divine and having that be a spiritual, like, powerful force. And then I also photographed um, imagery of lotuses down at Balboa Park to show uh, just the sim 
symbolic uh, symbolism of uh, feminism and to bring in those types of aspects and I also photographed the Immaculata at um, the University of San Diego which was really interesting and it was just a bunch of uh, divine um, feminine like um, powerful women in um, the aspect of spirituality which I wanted to bring into the concentration to kind of elevate it but also bring in a more spiritual and divine and guiding force to the whole portfolio in all. So that was mainly what I focused on. I think I've always had um, an affinity to photography in order to capture memories and images and I think that it's such a powerful medium of expression because it's also very personal for you to be able to look back on your life at all of your memories in images and and have a connection to those moments whether they're sad or happy but it ultimately is you're creating a story of you in your life and so that's why photography is also really powerful and why I'm drawn to it um, I think what, why a lot of people are drawn to it is because you're ultimately capturing different moments of your life that you want to remember later on and that you have the tool to do that and also that you have the power to um, capture your own perspective and bring that back and remember it that way is also really powerful. About 2006 we got our first uh, Macintosh and a scanner. Then we started like scanning, uh, you'd, you'd shoot in black and white then you'd scan your prints and then give me a Flickr portfolio. So then they learn, and then they do dust removal and basic things. And now sometimes, especially with color, we'll scan our negatives and print those from the, you know, digitally. But in, for black and white, they usually print their prints. And then so much work goes into the print that, you know, the, the Photoshop is kind of done. You scan the print yeah. rather than try to scan the negative and then do all that. Yeah. But sometimes we'll still scan. If it's a very difficult print to make, you can scan the negative. And I've heard it referred to in the last few years as the new hybridicity of digital and analog, like at UCSD Visual Arts Upper Division Catalog. So I think everybody's kind of figured on that because everything was like, throw everything away, get digital. Yeah. And then everything was like, well, these computers are old and the enlargers yeah. still work. And so, you know, I, my, my, my Ludditism made me hip after a while because I didn't, I fought, I kept the darkroom going yeah. and then the computers grew up around it. So now it's meshed. And a lot of people wish they'd done that now. And, film sales are up and all that. But there's that, that oh, intimacy yeah, they that they, and I've, I've had kids uh, from the class of like, I remember this girl was from the class of 2013. She went and shot the Salt and Sea in digital and had to go back and shoot it in film. No, but I remember I had a, a very creative student and she made, she was always making her own pinhole cameras on the side out of any box she could find, you know, an Altoid box, anything. <laughs> and she liked things that were imperfect and uh -huh. she painted, she was a painter as well. And she was really creative. She did go to art school and she <laughs> works in it now. I mean, she was, she was like somebody that wanted to be an artist, which I'm, I'm, I am art, but I am not an artist. But then, uh, so, so I showed her Photoshop and how you could just, when we first got it, and I go, you can dial, and she goes, and you can dial in. There's a numerical value for all those filters, so they can be repeated by anybody, anywhere in the world at any time. And that really bores me. And she went back to like putting cellophane over the lens, and you know, that kind of thing, because there's no handmade aspect to it. Yeah, you can't so really it really took care that. of itself, and the rest of them, and, and that, that seems to be a, a trend, you know, like a good, I made a mm -hmm. Photoshop filter, yeah. I feel like I want to honor Mr. Vern in this response, and I don't want to just give something that... Want me to I, leave? No, no, so you can <laughs> okay. stay. Um, <laughs> honestly, okay, I have loved taking this class so much. Like, it makes me happy to talk about... Like, this is a good question to ask because it makes me the most happy to talk about what I've learned. I think that I've taken away mostly Mr. Vern's humor and his different perspective on life. He thinks about things in a different way and he's also helped to share that with all of his students, which is really amazing. And also, I think this might be getting away from the question, but his support and everything just, it makes everybody feel like an artist. It doesn't make anybody feel like they're a better photographer, better photographer or worse photographer. I think that his um, his support of nature helps drive the class. It helps make people more collaborative. It helps make people more uh, willing to go out and shoot or drive up to LA to shoot a googie assignment. Um, honestly, Mr. Vern has been such a driving force in this class and 
the whole class would just collapse without him. And I don't think that the class would be the same if it was taught by somebody else. And everybody would agree with me. And I'm kind of getting away from the question, no, but that's, that's all. <laughs>